Um, just know that with hard work, dedication, and that decision that you make to change your life, that it is possible no matter how bad you think you are or how deep you think you are. Okay, so the story time that I am here to talk about today is the time that I got jumped by three chicks down in Renton. It was while I was living there. So I had been there for, you know, three years now, total of four years, but during that time I was there for about three years and um, the place that it happened was actually down in Aurora in uh, Seattle. So a very sketchy area if any of you guys have been there. If you have, I'm sure you know, it is such a sketchy freaking area, like hella. Like you don't wanna be down there, especially at nighttime alone. And if you're a chick, yeah, it could get really sketchy. But anyways, I decided to, um, you know, have my boyfriend at the time come, he, li he was living in Bellingham, Blaine area, have him come down from there to come and visit me. And at this time he had no idea that I was using, or I think maybe he did, he just didn't know how to approach me with it. Uh, so he drives down and he's been with me now for two days. And at this point I ran out of drugs and I was like, okay, well, um, babe, I need to go uh, meet up with this person because I'm going to go get some pot. Yeah, some pot. He's like, oh, well, let me go with you. I'm like, no, nah, are you sure? Like, it'll just be really quick. Like, you could just stay at my apartment. He's like, no, I want to go. I was like, okay. So we get in the car, I'm driving, and I am going to the house where I've been many a times. Um, keep in mind, you guys, this point in my life, I was escorting. So I had stacks of money with me at all times. Like, it wasn't normal. Like the typical person doesn't have, you know, multiple thousand dollars in their pocket. And when they go to pay for something, they just flip it all out. Like, no, usually people have cards and yeah, plastic, but no, I just carried all my cash with me everywhere I went. Um, I also dressed, you know, in a type of way. And so, uh, I guess all in all, it was sketchy me even going to this house, but I felt comfortable enough because I'd been there multiple times. Like I said, so anyways, get to the house. My boyfriend at the time was like, hey, India, do you want me to go inside with you? And I was like, eh, no, I think he knew, but, you know, I'm a huge, I was a huge liar, especially using heroin. It turns you into a completely different person. But yeah, so I was like, no, I I'm going to go in there alone. I got it. So I get out of the car, shut the door, walk down the stairs and then back up the stairs to this apartment and knock, knock, knock. Patrick lets me in and um, I go inside, go towards the back and I'm like walking, I'm like, oh, these are new. And I look up and in the wall and there's literally like bullet holes like that had gone through the apartment. He's like, yeah, man, some shit went down the other day, but we're cool, we're cool. I was like, okay. Uh, keep in mind, there was like three or four chicks in the living room, just like, dude, I don't even know. I don't even know if they were withdrawing if they, you know, were just sick, if they were just so effing angry at life, or if this was all game planned by Patrick, um, trying to get these women to like, you know, get together to meet at his place so that they could all try to attack me or whatnot. Um, I get, at this point, I'll never know if that was an inside job, but anyway, so I was like, okay, I'll take a uh, hundred of the dark so he um you know gets my hundred dollars worth and here i am i pull out all of my money in front of everyone and at this point you guys could be like oh india you were freaking asking for it dude like these chicks were dressed in uh, uh wife beaters that had holes in them like dirty sweatpants like and and they looked rough 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 so Anyways, I pulled the money out. I'm like, okay, oh, here's a hundred. Just pulled out a hundred dollar bill or whatever, handed it to him. And uh, he's like, damn, girl, you got stacks. I was like, Patrick, I do every time you see me. What's new? Anyways, put my money back in my bag and uh, grabbed the dope. I was like, all right, thanks. Gave him like a little tap, you know, bye. Turned around, started walking out the door take my step, take my other step. I go to grab the handle on the door and all of a sudden I get grabbed from the back of my head, ripped to the ground. I'm getting stomped in the stomach. I have three or four different women on top of me, punching me, punching me. I trying to rip my purse out of my hand, but I somehow managed 
to <laughs> lay on top of my purse in the fetal position. I thought I was going to die. I couldn't even run. I had freaking stilettos on. Like, I am holding my purse for dear effing life, just screaming bloody murder. Guess what? Thank God Nick was with me in the car that day. Uh, he heard me screaming from my car out in the parking lot, and I guess he ripped open the door. He started booking it inside job because there was a dude outside blocking the door with a gun, just like in his, like right here, just like that, just like holding it like this. Nick didn't care. He went and he came running, busted open the door, and you know, I'm getting the fucking shit beat out of me. Um, excuse my language, but anyways, it was super dramatic. I was getting the shit beat out of me and um, Nick just grabs these bitches and starts throwing them off of me. And all of the dudes that were watching uh, these other bitches, they're probably their chicks, whoop, me, whoop my ass, try to steal my shit. Uh, the, all of them jumped up. They're like, oh, what the fuck? They had their guns out and they were like pointing them at Nick. But dude, keep in mind, Nick is clean and sober. He does not use drugs. He's in love with me, loves me with all of his heart. He didn't see guns during this whole thing. He just seen me screaming, you know, you know, he, he had to come and save me is, is what, you know, I felt was running through his mind. He's just like, you know, I love her. I'm, I'm not going to let her die. Like, I need to save her no matter what. And that's exactly what he did. Like, he, he really loved me, you guys. Um, it's crazy. But anyway, so he's ripping these bitches off of me. You know, they're pointing their guns at him. And he grabs me. And he goes to lift me up from the shoulders, actually. And so I got one good boom. And with my stiletto heel in this bitch's stomach. And she was wearing her like wife beater thing, right? But I cupped a hole in her shirt and she started bleeding. Nick picks me up and uh, he's like, whoa, 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 you guys, this is my girl. I heard her screaming. I'm just in here to help her. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, these bitches had ripped my hair extensions out. I had, I had, you know, holes, bald spots in my hair, everywhere in my hair. I couldn't even walk, I was so fucked. Nick had to scoop me up. Keep in mind, I still have my purse, thank God. And he's like, well, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing, but we're out of here. And he just grabbed me, he didn't even wait. He didn't even give them time to fucking try to rob him or, I don't even know. He just didn't give them time for shit. So he just scooped me up and I'm bawling my eyes out. And um, he just carries me to my car and uh, he gets in the driver's side and he just starts driving us home. And yeah, that day he was like, babe, were you really getting weed? <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, babe, I was getting H. And karma's a bitch. I got my ass whooped. But it was really fucked up. I literally thought I was gonna die. I forgot that Nick was out in the car because I've never gone there with my boyfriend at the time. Like, uh-uh, he was not around that. Like, uh, no, like, but I was just screaming for anyone there who would help me. And I totally freaking forgot that like, phew, my guardian angel was there and he saved me. And um, yeah, I don't know what would have happened if he wasn't there, honestly, I have no idea. Like, I still think about that till this day. I'm like, if he wasn't there, like, what would have happened? Like, would, would people have called like 911 if they heard it from like across the way? Because I was screaming as if, as if my life depended on it, honestly. And I don't even know how long the fight lasted for before Nick got there. I would say a good 60 seconds to like a minute 20. And that's with three women on top of you, kicking you, grabbing wads of hair, ripping it out, punching you, stomping on your stomach, on your back. That's like, that had to have been like, let's see, three bitches, let's say 60 seconds. Let's say one hit per second. That's like 180 punches, kicks, everything all together within that amount of time. I don't know how, but I did not break any bones. Um, <laughs> 
I was bleeding on the face though, everywhere. My eye, it, it, I think like a vessel in my eye popped, but anyways, my eye was bleeding. Um, my nose was bleeding. This is where I got my chipped tooth. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah, but uh, oh yeah, I had wads of hair like taken out of my head. Um, oh, bruised up everywhere. Black, blue ribs. This was a good, like, I don't know. Um, this probably happened when I was 20. So this was like seven years ago. This was towards the end of my addiction, thank God. But yeah, I don't think that I would have gotten clean the time that I got clean if I wouldn't have moved down to Renton um, and stayed there for a minute for the amount of time that I did because that was really what put the icing like on the cake, cherry on top, get your ass clean because now, now look at everything you've been through, bitch. Now look at it. <laughs> oh man, there are so many things that even like my life, my, my, how my life was is nothing normal or average or mediocre about it. My story is super unique and it's insane the amount of trauma and abuse and just misery somebody can go through and get over it and come out on top and happy and thriving and um, blessed, really, super blessed, but Anyways, that's all I have time for. I'm trying to keep this video a little bit shorter than the other one, so that's why, you know, it's not as long as the one before. But anyways, I just wanted to say thank you guys for the support that you gave me um, for the first video, and I'm sure for this video too, so thank you in advance. And hopefully if you learned something, you can share that with me and let me know. I always love hearing that I am helping people or helping things make sense, giving them faith inspiring them to share their stories to help other people or anything of that nature. So, all right guys, thanks.